This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. We're going to get into the QC label today. Let's get into this. Okay, so QC really started off with the Migos. The Migos who had been you know, just kind of like groomed by Gucci Man. Okay, uh, this is when they had Bando and all this other stuff. And then, you know, Gucci Man kind of passed him off to his friend QCP. QCP had some money. He was starting a label. Coach K was a part of this label. And Coach K is very instrumental with Jeezy's career, Gucci's career, and a bunch of people's career before that. Very connected in the industry. He had all the connections. They went in and made the Migos. Well, they gave the Migos the support. The Migos were already superstars. They gave them the support they needed to become the superstars they already were. And as we saw, Drake got involved did the Versace song already the Versace song was hot but that took it to another level when Drake got on it I'm almost thinking that Drake is like a silent partner with QC or he has some like weird relationship with uh, Coach K or QCP anyways the Migos took off and that was the foundation they needed to sign as many rappers as they needed for a while I thought Migos were signing rappers they were courting rappers and signing them you had you know a lot of different rappers that didn't really go like yeah, Johnny Cinco was one, uh, Flip of Flip of the Skipper, Skip of the Flipper, you know, these guys, you thought I thought they were under Migos, but they were also under QC. It was almost like they were doing like a joint venture type of thing. <clears throat> and then they you know, they kept growing and growing, you know, they got a little yachty, that was their next really big success. And they were growing as a label. They've had a lot of flops, but they've had a lot of wins. Like any label, okay? You gotta, you gotta just roll the dice. Anyways, everything looked good. It looked like a brotherhood. They were always together. They were buying each other cars. They were, you know, it just looked like a brotherhood. And it's always good in the beginning until everybody starts getting way too much money, okay? Uh, where I saw things really took a divide is when Little Baby got involved. Okay, now Little Baby is QCP's friend. I can almost relate this to Rockefeller. You had Jay-Z, the foundation with Dame Dash. Um, and, you know, they, they were, uh, they built a, a huge brand over there. And it's just, that you thought it was like a brotherhood as well. And they were signing so many acts. They had Memphis Bleak, um, everybody. And eventually, what messed it up was Dame Dash introducing his friend. And you can't for forget Kareem Biggs, okay? You can't forget him. But um, these three guys, they had Memphis Bleak, Jay-Z. Then they got Beanie Siegel. Beanie Siegel had State Property. Um, you know, then Cameron got involved. And when Cameron got involved, it got messy because Dame, that was Dame Dash's friend, just like Little Baby is QCP's friend. And you know, Jay-Z didn't take so much to Cameron, but the difference is Migos took to Little Baby and they co-signed him. And you know, they, they helped groom him, but other rappers were grooming him too, like Young Thug. He was already somebody that was known in Atlanta, so he didn't like need the Migos, but it helped. It made the whole brotherhood look like something, the label. But nobody expected Little Baby to be what he is right now. Little Baby is the new Meek Mill, okay? Bigger than that though, like he's the top artist. Coincidentally, Drake did a feature with Little Baby on his first album as well. Drake did stuff with Little, uh, little Yaddy, you know? Is Drake a silent partner at QC or something? That's just an alleged rumor I have. Anyways, we've heard rumors recently that uh, Little Baby ran into... Uh... Oh, yeah, don't forget, Cardi B was managed by QCP for a while. Not anymore. But uh, so you have Offset allegedly having problems with Little Baby. We heard these rumors outside of a club. But there was no footage or anything, so it was hard to believe. Now, after Migos publicly came out with a suit against QCP, 
because they were represented by the same lawyer. They feel like millions of dollars were stolen from them and taken from them, and they were treating a failure and fairly after going through the records, you know, the, all the accounting and everything. And that's a big public problem for QC. Once you start seeing problems, you saw this with G Unit, Dipset, Rockefeller. Once you start getting problems and turmoil within the label, it's over. People start losing faith in it. It's almost like, you know, people wait for that problem to happen in the family and then it just breaks up. And there's still a point where they can fix this. And I'm going to see, like, usually there's too many egos involved and nobody can fix it. Too many, people have too many money. People have too many people in their ear at that point. Uh, people have gone to the fork on the road and gone left or right. The Migos are at a point where they're unified against QC. QCP released a whole letter talking about how he supported these guys. And let's be honest, without his support, they wouldn't have had, if without that support, it would, they might have never happened for them or would have taken longer. They might not have ever been superstars the way they are right now. And they, they were born superstars. Just you need the, the system behind you. And he gave them the studio, the, the money. The, the connections, you, it, the, all this is necessary. You can't just be make great songs. If the great songs are never heard or great songs are never put in front of people or, or for, forced on people, you'll, you'll never make it. They'll just be great songs. It takes a, it takes a whole unit, just like, just like a, a, a major basketball team. You can have great players, but you need a great organization to go behind great players. The players are super essential because if you don't have great players, you have nothing. But you also need a good... Look, look what with T.I. When T.I. left Atlantic, it's never been the same for him ever again because he didn't... He needed to know how to do it on his own. But there's something... Labels have certain kind of connections that independents don't always get. It's never as big as it is on, as on a major... Uh, it's just different. Majors just have so many connections. You have 20 people working on your album. Granted, you're going to get a lot less money. So it's always better to go independent. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying it doesn't feel the same. <laughs> when you get the whole building behind you, it's different, man. You know? Um, so anyways, recently, Little Baby's crew ran into takeoff, allegedly coming out of a restaurant in Atlanta and they kind of chase him around the car and put pressure on him you know because it's making the whole label look bad you know and uh, little baby's a very loyal person he's loyal to QCP and he probably feels like that this should have been handled behind closed doors within the family and not brought publicly to everybody else and I kind of agree with that once you start bringing it publicly to everybody else it just makes everything look weak. You don't want everybody else to know family problems, family issues. You gotta, you gotta handle that stuff within the family. Otherwise, everybody questions the family and then they try the family because they see a weakness. You can't show weakness. Now the fans are questioning QC. TDE, you don't see any problems going on over there. There might be problems, but we don't know about them. And you shouldn't know about them. That's just how I feel about that kind of stuff. That stuff should be kept private. Little Yachty, don't know his situation. He's not someone who seems to question a bunch of stuff. Um, and I don't know who got in the Migos ear, but I'm sure somebody... They just moved forward with something that they should, probably should have just handled and that could have gotten hashed out. I hope they work it out, though. I hope they can save this and save face because it looks spooky right now. Talking about spooky, let's move to another topic. Rappers. I'm going to talk about this a lot this week. Noticing a lot of rappers. I'm not going to name any names because they get hurt. They get emotional. A lot of rappers starting podcasts. It's getting spooky out there for them. There's probably 20 failed rappers. It's a failure 
when you move to podcasting. Granted, there's a few, a handful of rappers that were podcasting way, way long ago, and they get a pass. But certain ones don't. Your records weren't selling, and you want to move into other spaces and crowd and dilute everything. Rappers ruin things at the same time. Trust me. Rappers are good at rapping, but then, you know, when rapping ain't working so much anymore, they go for the easy layup. Yo, I could do this for talking in the mic. And most of them aren't even that interesting when they're talking. They have a few people on their podcast and that's supposed to be interesting? Nah. And plus, they're never they're always going to be biased in their opinions. Why listen to them? They're going to be biased for their friends and everything. Listen to people that aren't biased. Academics, people like that. I've been doing stuff like this since 2006. Okay? 2006 I've been doing this since I was last year in high school I wasn't last year in high school in 2006 I've actually been doing this since 2002 to be honest I didn't start making any name for myself till 2004 okay it took me two years to even get in the game I was doing rap DVDs up for rappers okay then I did my own DVD. Then me and Fendi came up with the, we did the come up DVD. Okay, we teamed up together. Then I did World Star with Q. Okay, before, like, ground up, foundation up. Then I did YouTube. And in the, in the middle of that, I was doing music videos. But in doing music videos, I was also doing interviews. I've been doing this, okay? Been media. This is my life. Elliot Wilson, that's his life did xxl did the did his thing now okay but there's certain rappers that just move into the space because rap isn't working anymore you don't sell any records <laughs> it's pathetic i'm gonna talk in the mic now you know and of course they're gonna bring their fans with them and it's gonna look like it's working for a while it always gets boring it always gets boring um so anyways that cycle's going on now um Again, I'm not naming any specific names because they get emotional. You can draw your own conclusions. But every week I'm seeing a new rapper becoming a podcaster because it just ain't working anymore. Now, Lil Wayne, I don't. I give him a pass automatically because I know why Lil Wayne did Young Money Radio. He does not like being interviewed. He stopped letting people interview him, really, in 2008. He stopped doing that. He doesn't like the way people treat him in interviews. So he does his own stuff. Little Wayne's always going to get a pass from my book. Joe Budden always gets a pass. He's always been thinking outside the box and doing stuff differently. Okay. He was like trying to do vlogging back in 2007. <laughs> something like that. He's always been a little bit ahead of the curve. Okay. He went independent before a lot of people. I think by not by choice, but because Def Jam really want to do with deal with him anymore but still he's been ahead of the curve core mega is the first rapper i really saw i went independent and was working with him um an infamous mob followed him mob deep did some independent stuff right after that core mega is a trailblazer for independent being successful being blackballed in the music industry going independent making Koch a name for rap where Jim Jones and other people decided to go over there. Anyways, I'm on a tangent. I love you guys and I appreciate you guys. This is Jordan Tower with JT News. And I'll check you guys on the next one.